Hey, I'm Tiffany from OMH Agency. I'm the host of the podcast Next Step Nation and the founder of the podcast Ignition System. Today, I'm going to tell you about something that I get asked about all the time from podcasting pros, as well as rookies and even people who are thinking about a podcast. And that is, how do you make money off of your podcast? You might be wondering the same thing. And a lot of times we're told that we can't make any money on podcasting until down the road when we have you know six figure numbers coming in as far as our audience is concerned. And that's just not true. You can literally make money in the first month. In fact, if you have an idea for a podcast and it's interview based, I'm about to drop three main pillars of podcast profiting that we focus on through the podcast ignition system and next step nation. Um, you know, again, there are a lot of ways to, to profit, but these are ways that I, they're solid, they're predictable, and you can do them right away. So before I tell you about those three ways, I just wanted to let you know if you are interested in anything I'm talking about, you want to talk about it more, if you need some help, if you feel like you, you know, if you are a podcaster, especially, you know how much work it is already. We do have a system to help lighten your load. It streamlines everything as well as make sure that you get out to a massive audience. We've got over 41 pieces of content that goes out on every single recorded episode uh, that we can help your team push out and leave you to doing your thing. So um, we focus on profit as well as the audience. So uh, just message me or, or comment and I'll be happy to reach out and we can connect and I'd love to talk to you more about it. But first, let me tell you about the three ways that you can make money with your podcast. The first is strategic guesting. And that just has to do with being really strategic about who is on your show. So if you have a solo show, this isn't going to affect you. But if you have guests on your show, there is an incredible way and an incredible opportunity to meet people that you would never get in front of, as well as meeting people you could get in front of. But this just fast tracks the whole thing. So as you're establishing your guest pool, you want about 75% of your guests to be ideal clients, mostly prospects, but you can also include some of your existing clients to improve your retention rate. About 20% can be what I call collaborators. So they're people who are in complementary fields to yours where you share an audience, you're both experts, it's somebody that you would recommend and you're talking about things relevant to your show um, but it's a huge advantage to that person that you're interviewing to be on your show because you're promoting them, but you can turn that into a JV. You can turn that into a partnership opportunity, or, you know, you can be affiliates. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do for one another. The third uh, guest uh, guest segment, about 5% are what I call rock stars. Now you might be famous already, but we all have rock stars in our life. We all, we all have that person that we're like, oh, if I could just talk to that person. Podcasting is a way that you can do it easily. And again, we've got a system and it, and it can help you do that. It's very systematic. In the process, no matter who is in your guest pool, they all get what we call white glove service. So from the moment that you start prospecting them all the way through to when you're doing the recording to right after the recording, uh, that person is going to be well-informed and equipped to, do, to provide the best content so that when they do see themselves all over the internet, they are going to be really happy with the end results. So, um, so again, you know, let me know if you want help with that. But guesting with each segment, make sure that you know what the outcome is that you're looking for so that you can measure it and improve it along the way. So that's the first one, strategic guesting. Number two is on-air lead generation. So number one and number two, um, number one is a way you can make, you can uh, leverage your podcast and make money in the first month. So you haven't even launched an episode yet and you can already be converting that into sales. Number two, you can start converting as soon as the recording goes out, but you need to be strategic about it before you start producing episodes. So you're out there, you're making all these amazing podcast episodes, you're recording them, you're putting in a really cool intro and a really cool outro. Don't forget the call to action, okay? This is your opportunity to give your audience a next step. Don't look at it as a sales moment. Look at it like they're about to hear some stuff 
and I can actually help them take action on what they're about to hear because we, we're all listening to podcasts and sometimes we're like, ah, oh, I wish I could just capture this moment and do something with it. That's your call to action. Think of a download or a giveaway, or even if it's subscribing to your show, give them a next step so that they can immediately feel, just lock that feeling in and, and take action on it. Um, it's just one more reason that they're going to appreciate you once the show is over. That turns into people who are entering your sales funnel. So so these are leads coming in. If, if it's, you know, subscribers, then they're really top of the funnel. They haven't even committed to sign up for anything yet. But if they actually, if you give them something easy, like an easy domain name to remember that they can take a download. So let's say you just talked about, you know, how to grow your business or let's, let's think of something non, non-business consulty. Uh, if you're a plumber and you're like, um, you know, hey, we just had Moen on talking about sinks. Now, uh, you know, be sure to go download our guide to planning your bathroom at www.planmybathroom.com. You know, think of something that's easy for them to remember or a text number, a number that they can just text and get that download. And then you have them as a contact. Now, they're not even a cold lead because they already trust you. They trust you enough that they're willing to give you their contact information. So it's actually they're deeper into the funnel than just somebody who went to your website. This is somebody who they're a fan, they're a follower. So, so make it a deliberate part of your sales process. And that is how you get on air lead generation. The third way is what I call partner placement. Now we've all heard about, heard about sponsorships and advertising and up until now, advertising, you pretty much had to have, you know, 300,000 or I don't know, some six figure astronomical number before you can start doing any kind of advertising, which you might already be there. You might be like, yeah, I've qualified all this time for sponsorships. However, I am a, I am not a fan of crappy content and not that ads are crappy content, but my own personal opinion is, is I want the show to make sense. I want, I resent commercials my own self. So I guess that's probably why I teach people to avoid some disruptive advertisement. Now there's nothing wrong with ads. And honestly, if it's a next step, I'm okay with ads. So, you know, I listen to a podcast where someone's showing me how to build my business and then a gusto ad comes in telling me how I can do my uh, payroll. I mean, that makes sense that it's on topic. So I'm not against sponsorships by any stretch. However, I prefer partner placement. So when we're watching a television program and we see a Coca-Cola bottle in the corner or something like that, they can be subtle because, you know, they're Coca-Cola or Nike or all these different big brands where everybody knows their brand. This is kind of like that. It's, it's product placement, but this is really more deliberate. It's where you are able to bring in, again, really a collaborator. So you may have met them in phase one where you brought them on your show and you built this great relationship and you're referring each other and they have some interesting take on their field. And so you, you think, you know, what's a way that I can feature you on my show and you're on every single episode, you've got your own segment and then you say your thing, you do your shtick, and then right after the announcer or you say, hey, you know, find out more at www, I am awesome, <laughs> you know, or whatever the website is, but they have their segment and then they can do that piece at the end. The beauty of this is, is you can have somebody that you've partnered with that you value and they, maybe they don't have the means or the desire to have their own podcast. This is a really incredible way to bring someone in you're, you're giving them the podcasting platform to promote themselves. They, they get, you know, maybe two to three minutes to have a segment. They drop their, their web address really quickly with some kind of catchy reason that after someone listened to their cool little segment, they have a next step for that. But you can, col you can collect uh, revenue by helping promote that. You know, you can, you can really scale that however you want. You could you know, charge for this is how much it is just to be on the podcast, or you can scale it right up to, you know, we'll do the full 41 pieces of content just for your feature and then charge more. But that is a really relevant way to uh, 
bring in revenue for your podcast. So those are three really solid ways. Again, let me know if you want any help with these. This is one piece of our podcast ignition system. The system itself brings you through processes. So uh, we take care of the host and we take care of the VAs. The host, we're really protective of it shouldn't feel really heavy to you. It feels light. You need to do your thing, but you also need to do things like guest, um, guest uh, research. I know with our process, I mean, quite honestly, I've taken my guest research from about 30 to 45 minutes per guest to down to like three to seven minutes. Now I do spend more time sometimes on it, but because of the process, it's just so easy to do. And I can get a lot of information really, really quickly and still type things in so that I can have a good show. <laughs> um, but so we take care of the hosts, we take care of the VAs, we've got processes that we're constantly streamlining even more. So we we're always auditing and improving our processes. But right now we have a process that it's plug and play. Uh, we meet with you, we make sure we have all the assets in place. We have a 21 day uh, power start so that we kind of sit on our hosts and make sure that everything gets done because as a host you know because I'm you I eat my own cooking so I can I can say this but I know it's easy to skip some of those setup things but you're you're really crippling your team by doing that so we spend uh, there's a one one meeting training workshop where you're actually doing the things with me on the call and we're all doing it together and you're getting through that process with a once a week workshop and then a very quick check-in later in the week. And then we have a big ignition kickoff. Now this might sound like it's for just newbies and it's not. It is 100% for experienced podcasters as well as someone launching their own show. As experienced podcasters, we skip a lot of steps. So that, those, um, that 21 days to, to the power start, to the ignition, that helps you get on track with the process. Once we're done with that, then our team is able to answer questions for your VAs to help them if they're running into any issues with their processes or the handoffs. There, you know, there are different handoffs that happen. As you know, if you have a podcast, there are a lot of moving parts. But when you set up, when the setup is taken care of in a way that our team can help, then that relieves you a lot of a lot of that. But uh, the system itself, so the hosts, we're focusing on making it light and making the show great and giving you the tools that you need to do the best job possible. Uh, we also have like the anatomy of the interview itself that we can coach you through as well if, if you want some ideas about that. But then when it comes to the team, uh, the processes themselves, is ve they're very focused on monetization as well as multiplication. So getting the uh, audience built. So again, you know, you don't want to know all that stuff, but just know it's robust. If you've done a podcast, you know how much time that takes. So anyway, that's it. I hope that you uh, got some value out of our, um, you know, our three main pillars of uh, profiting from podcasts. And I look forward to your comments. Let me know what you think and definitely hit me up if I can help you.